Welcome to the 15th episode of the Radiant Black Podcast. This is a podcast focused on the Radiant Black series by Kyle Higgins, Marcelo Costa, Michael Basudo, and Becca Carey. We have some special guests today, so let's get to it. Yeah, we're joined uh, by a super massive, uh, the team behind Supermassive. It's amazing to have them here with us. Of course, Kyle Higgins, finally on the Radiant Black Podcast. How's it going, Kyle? I'm good. How about, how about you guys? Uh, this is uh, amazing. We're really uh, glad. To, yeah, it's it's a big <laughs> day for excited. us. Probably the biggest day so far. And uh, it's super massive, you might say. And not just joined by Kyle. We've also got Ryan Parrott here and Matt Groom. How's it going, Ryan? Good, man. Thanks for having me on here. No problem. Matt, how are you? I'm fantastic and super excited to uh, be talking about Supermassive finally um, and what it means for all three of our books. Uh, yeah, it's less than a month away. I'm super excited for where this oh is going to go. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and we just lost Michael. He had a heart attack, so we're going to move on. <laughs> and, of course, yeah, the man behind the scenes, Michael Basudel's here, uh, pulling the strings and uh, making things work. How's it going? Yeah, I wish you hadn't told me it's less than a month away. <laughs> Every time I hear an interview with you, it's just like a series of deadlines and more stuff on your plate and yet more stuff to do. It uh, must be a nightmare, but it's got to be worth it. If Like just one year ago, Radiant Black wasn't even out and now you've got this in a whole crossover. It's got to be pretty good. It's wild. It's wild. I still, sometimes people say to me like, so it hasn't been a year yet. And I go, no, that, that is simply cannot be correct. I've aged seven years in the past 12 months. <laughs> No, You're it's like great. Marshall coming out of existence, basically. Yeah, it's all gone. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sweet. So uh, we've got a few questions about Supermassive. Not much is known. You guys are introducing two uh, new characters to the world in this. I just want to know uh, how big, how many pages is the issue going to be? I know. I want to see if anybody else knows. I it, can, can I guess? <laughs> it's like 50, 50? It's 50 it's 50 story pages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. guess. Wow. Yeah, it's, there's, there's, it's there's, there's a little bit of back matter as well, just to sort of even out the page Ooh. count. But it's it's fifty story pages. So I think we can also I think we can also say well, we can if you're going to about... say about the special thing, we haven't told people about that yet. Well, what well, was the prize? It was a person. It was what oh, I was okay. going to talk about. Okay, I don't know what you're talking. Oh, I know okay. what you're talking about. That's no. Why would I talk about that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You talk about things sometimes, Kyle. <laughs> this is how the whole interview is going to go. We're just going to talk about going around you guys. No, um, we are being uh, actually. So Francesco Mana is is drawing um, the book, obviously, um, mm. but we're also being joined um, by another uh, illustrator with uh, some tokusatsu uh, type uh, connections um, mm -hmm. in uh, the form of one of Ryan's uh, collaborators. Uh, Simone, uh, who uh, why I can never pronounce his last name, uh, Ragazzoni. Ragazzoni. Simone Ragazzoni is going to be joining Supermassive as well, and he's doing uh, a, a chunk of pages here. That uh, awesome. it's it is very massive. <laughs> the book 50, <laughs> 50 story pages is been it's Big, uh, it's awesome, and I think I think we're all probably to a person very happy and excited with what how it's coming in um but it's you know it's a pretty herculean effort so yeah very excited to have simone with us and uh and and yeah we'll be seeing more we'll be seeing more stuff from it or we'll be showing more stuff from it pretty soon here so sweet so there's even more surprise beyond the surprise you just dropped there's always more with kyle higgins he's always working on <laughs> who knows what we've got bath bombs i mean after bath bombs I I, can't i'm gonna leave go. i don't i don't need to be here for this this is <laughs> You guys, you guys, can, uh, I don't, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> well, it only took two minutes, like five minutes in the interview to make you uncomfortable. So, you know, yeah. check. <laughs> I, actually, I wanted to let you know, since, you know, we started the Radiant Black podcast, one of the most brought up things, is, uh, sorry, uh, the, the Discord for the podcast and then mm -hmm. it became for Radiant Black. One of the most brought up things is Inferno Go Red. I think one of the questions we get asked the most is, is there going to be a chance for us to get in front of Go Red if we missed out on the Kickstarter? And we've had to reassure so many people constantly <laughs> that it's going to be reprinted. So I, yeah. Matt, I'm just letting you know, there's a lot of demand for uh, Inferno Go Red. And one question I've got is, is there a timeline on when it's going to come out? There is a tentative timeline that we're not going to like lay out explicitly now, because as we've seen in 
the world production and things like where does paper come from um have been surprisingly <laughs> hard to lock out unfortunately uh, but, we'll, leave, uh we'll, we'll, we'll leave a link in the show notes yeah. to where it'll paper be, comes from it'll be 2022 <laughs> yes. so as, long, uh, so, as long as it's within this year yeah it's within this year absolutely um and it yeah, it's going to be big. So for, for those who don't know, we ran a Kickstarter last year to fund it because it is going to be a graphic novel. Uh, through the Kickstarter, we're able to expand it to 120 pages. Um, so oh, the wow. reason it's uh, taking a while is because it is absolutely huge and Erica is just plowing through it now. And I can't can't wait to show you guys some of the pages she's doing. Um, I legitimately think it's going to be one of the best looking books on stands once it hits. So yeah, the support has been overwhelming people showing up for the kickstarter seeing things like um fan art uh fan pixel art uh like the excitement around the helmets all that sort of stuff it's been so gratifying and appreciated and it keeps eric and i uh fueled as we power through oh yeah it looks it looks awesome. really good yeah i've liked everything i've seen so far do you know whether it's going to be an ongoing series or mini series or maxi series so we're going to do Inferno Go Red book one. And after that, we'll, you know, I, I don't think it would surprise anyone to hear that I would love to do more. And of course it depends on response like anything else in this world, but also perhaps uh, if you pick up Supermassive, you may get something of a sense of, where that might head because uh something that i think we've i've touched on in the the discord that you guys have is that uh in super massive in inferno Gored's timeline is actually set after inferno go red book one so you're gonna get this little glimpse into what cassia looks like as something of a fully formed superhero um and it's not gonna like ruin the events of the book we, we won't be spoiling anything we've sort of like played a deaf game of you know, threading things through, but through Supermassive, you're going to get a bit of a preview of what's next for Inferno Go Red before you even read Inferno Go Red Book One, which I think is kind of a fun way of um, getting people excited about the universe. Oh, yeah. It's funny, like it's... but Echo is one of my favorite characters, and the eye thing that Cassia's got just hooked me on immediately when I saw her design. <laughs> I fell in love. I was just like, this this looks amazing. So, well, can't that's wait. the thing about Erica is she just like, the characters that she creates have such humanity and depth immediately. They're just, you, you get this incredibly fully realized sense of who they are as people. And I think that's like part of the joy of comics, right? It's collaborating and especially at image where you're in control, I will come up with something and then Erica will be like, yeah, I get what you're coming for, but what about this instead? And I'm like, that's amazing. And that inspires me to, you know, take it a different direction. And, you know, I'm sure that that's the experience that we've all, all three of us have had um, on these books. And Girl Red's got to be the, one of the first Kickstarter characters to get into the Image Universe proper too, right? I hadn't considered that, I suppose. <laughs> so I think there has there have been Image yeah, books. Noctera, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, but it's not but, superhero. But so. do you mean, yeah. yeah, do you mean the Image, like, kind of superhero universe? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, superhero-wise, I guess so. But yeah, I didn't mean, like, in general, but I could. Yeah, yeah I, I guess so. It's yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Nice. Uh, speaking of Cassia, did did anything or was there anything in particular that inspired her design? Because like visually, it's it's really cool in my opinion. I, I can tell you that there were literally dozens of yeah. um, design sketches that Erica and I went back and forth on because we had our inspirations, right? Like Cassia is very Tokusatsu inspired. Um, we're looking at a lot of Super Sentai, a lot of Kamen Rider, uh, but also there was just a lot of what does a teen superhero of the future look like? You know, how can we bring that personality? How can we bring that feeling? So it's not like, you know, some 50 to 60 year old, um, like editorial staffers being like, oh, this is what the kids are like. Um, Eric is young. She's got like this tremendous insight into like, you know, youth culture and I think sort of taking tokusatsu, taking that understanding, blending them together, uh, and just lots of iteration, you know. Like but kind of for for the old man projecting what the kids will like angle, luckily we have Michael, and he's great <laughs> at all of it. So 
just worked Am out. Am I the old man or what the kids were like? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Michael is what the kids were like. That's, that's what I've always said. All right. Well, thanks. Um, Ryan, first of all, I just want to say I'm very excited for Rogue Sun. Uh, the design blew everyone away immediately. It was everybody couldn't stop talking about it on the Discord. People are so excited. We've already got people talking about how they're planning to get the 150 ratio on day one, and they're stalking eBay every day and waiting for some sort of drop. It's, it's amazing. So, Ryan, you got to go on the you, Discord more. I oh, should. Yeah. I should. <laughs> So you guys are real. They're not just my imaginary friends. The Discord exists, <laughs> and, it's, and it's, it's lovely. It's spectacular. So yeah, so, definitely uh, a place to be for more stuff like this. But yeah, continue that. Okay. Is, is uh, the rogue son that's going to be in Supermassive, is that going to be Marcus Bell, or is that going to be Dylan? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, totally. Um, it's going to be Marcus. Um, and when you talked about design, uh, Abel, uh, my artist, did it, and he is my artist. Well, actually, yeah, he's my. I'm not giving to anybody now. <laughs> uh, uh, Kyle actually hooked us up, and Abel's fantastic. I, I, it's weird. <laughs> we did one design for that. I think he did maybe oh, wow. two drawings. He did the first drawing, and then he was like, what if there was a little more fire? And it was like, bam. And I was like, done. So it's I'm going to take full run. credit for it, but yes. it's all Abel. Abel did an am amazing job. We talked about it for a long time in sort of like like obscure fashion, like kind of characters we wanted it to like riff off of, like Ghost Rider and Dark Hawk and, and, and all that stuff. And, and just, I said like a knight that's on fire. I think his name was actually Nightfire for a little while. And then everybody told me that's oh, a terrible wow. name. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so that, so he did that and I, I love it. I, I'm so happy with the design. I think it's one of the things that's my favorite thing about doing like variants for it is like, I get to see all these different artists do like different versions of that flame and just have fun with it. So that's great. That's um, awesome. But yeah, so, so in Supermassive, um, Marcus Bell is actually going to be uh, the, the, is the version of that. And as you, you know, if you read the solicit for the first issue, the actual series is about his son after Marcus passes away, who sort of inherits all of his, what, all, of his all of his powers and sort of has to learn about the guy that he, that left him when he was a little kid and sort of hates him in order to sort of learn how to become a superhero, he has to learn about the person he hates most in the world. But what was so fun about doing this was, we're like, wait, if we do Supermassive, we can do Marcus and you can actually get to know that guy in real time as opposed to sort of just like learning about him in hindsight in the series so it's, it was kind of those one of those perfect opportunities for us to sort of build out and and you know that's one of the things I, that, I think that's what was so fun about just building this from the beginning was like all of us just sort of brainstorming and talking about stuff and then being like wait what if we tried this what if we tried that because we're all friends I mean we all just sort of like Kyle and I went to the Clippers game the other night and we broke story there so like because it was a terrible game uh so <laughs> but that's the fun thing about doing one of these events right with all of us and all we all have our own worlds but we just hang out and talk and stuff so it, it just makes it a lot easier to sort of throw stuff into people's like remember I, I was writing issue four the other day and I, I just text Kyle I was like hey can I use this action figure that you dropped in the second issue of your and he's like yeah and so you know just like it's like that that back and forth makes it really fun it's like just hanging out with your friends that's awesome that's a really cool dynamic to have uh, working on a comic book uh, hopefully it probably is going to reflect on the pages because uh, everything's been fantastic so far so is rogue sun going to be an ongoing series I mean, knock on wood. Hopefully, I, that's the I'm I'm writing it that way, and then we'll see if uh, if, the, if the financial gods and comic gods agree with that. But uh, <laughs> but that's the idea. Yeah, I, I would love to do it as long as uh, humanly possible. Yeah, Ryan okay. and I have talked a little about what volume two might be and some story ideas that Ryan has for that. And I think there's some really exciting stuff. They're not that the first volume wouldn't also be exciting, but like you know, once you get to once you've established everything, getting to play a little more, like. I think we could have a lot of fun if if all things work out. Yeah, the first the first arc when we were sitting around talking about like, you know, I think the hardest thing when you're creating like your own creator own comic book, it's like, how do you how do you pitch it? Like, how do you make it a different? Because there's so many options, right? And you're just like, it's a superhero book. That's not a pitch. So yeah. <laughs> so we talked about it. We're like, well, it's about a superhero who dies and then son taking over. So what we discovered is like the first arc is a murder mystery. It's a who killed Rogue Son and why did they do it? And can Dylan figure that out before that person comes looking for him? So that's really what the first, you know, the first arc is. It's all about this, this sort of like learning about it's it's just a detective story. It's about him trying to figure out who his dad was and why that person killed him and you know, can he protect himself? But then when we get hopefully, you know, knock on wood, get to do the second arc, that actually will set up more of the larger scope of the universe and and really explain sort of like who the big bads are the good guys the bad stuff like because and all that stuff we knew and already had sort of set up and ready to go it's just the nature of that first story we're like 
would he be worried about larger stuff or would he literally be worried about what happened to my dad? So it, it was a story act. It was like a weird sort of story realization of like, oh no, this is, it's, it's a personal story and we'll get to the larger yeah. world. And it's, and it's peppered out throughout the first arc. So you'll get an idea of what's going on. I think that's the aspect that was the most exciting to me when Ryan first was talking about it. Like it's, Look, we all have we all have relationships with parental figures that are complicated, you know. And so, exploring a new superhero series through that father son dynamic in our current times, um, like that's that's the thing. And I'm trying not I don't want to spoil anything, but like learning who this man was, who Marcus was, is such a core portion of like the heart of this entire thing would that be without yeah. spoiling anything yeah. there's a reason it's called rogue son and i know how to spell <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. I said that on the podcast by the way and i'm so happy that's true so because yeah. i was like that that can't just be like it, it's a play on words like it has well, the point is intended yeah, yeah for sure yeah it has 100 like, okay I'm glad that's yeah. the theme of this that's the theme of the book i mean i guess the, the somebody asked me who the a comp was for for dylan i was like uh flash thompson like that's the character that I like because I like that character. I love that guy who I think, you know, the squeaky clean superhero guys are cool, but I really like the edgy bully people because when you dig into who they actually are, especially when the, when the book settles on them, it's always interesting because there's a reason that they act the yeah. way that they do. Yep. And uh, one of my favorite scenes in any of the book I've written is there's a scene where uh, Dylan blackmails his fellow students into doing his homework for them. And <laughs> like, I know that's a bad, bad thing, but like, I like that character. So like, <laughs> and we'll deal with that. I also think there's something interesting about the idea of if you're a bad person who gets superpowers and you become a hero, how does that change you? Does that change you fundamentally? Does that change you in every aspect of your life? You know, are you, is it okay to save people's life if you're cheating on your homework? Like that's the kind of, I th or is it actually, is it okay to cheat on your homework if you're saving people's lives? Like those yeah. are the questions that I thought were interesting. And when, when we dealt with trying to figure out who Dylan was. Yeah. And we won't have to wait long to hear from Rogue Sun right after it's like three weeks after Supermassive, we can dive right into Rogue Sun, which is really awesome. I think right now it is actually the week after, I think is where oh, those books you are sold. I checked the image of the site. So it's <laughs> Every, everything's up in the air. So. Yeah, there's, look, uh, print production at the moment, as we've mentioned, is uh, a nightmare. And the folks at Image who are handling that for us are doing genuine miracles to make it happen. Yeah. But uh, sometimes we have to push a book a week or two to make things line up. And so, yeah, it'll be super massive on shelves one week and then Rogue Sun 1 the following week. Awesome. That's so cool. And I believe, I mean, we can also say it'll the week before Supermassive will be Radiant Black 12. Yep. So that's shifting slightly as well. Yeah. Sweet. Sorry to your wallets. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Ryan, do you think that having a friend like uh, Kyle, because all three of you are, you know, obviously you're tight and you, you've all worked on Power Rangers in some capacity, obviously doing some awesome things there. So you've got that connective thread going. And uh, do you think that having a friend like Kyle, who's already like a year in into his own creator own series, do you think that motivated you or helped you during your own shift towards creator own series? And the Here, don't worry, Ryan, I'll mute my camera. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean uh just to say it i've, I've done three creator own books already just so like he's not i don't want to give okay. the man too much credit because he's sitting right here but um but yeah i think that the, i mean kyle kyle when we first told like, kyle i remember kyle pitching me radiant black and 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 when he pitched it, he didn't just pitch the log line. It was like, here's the first like 45 issues now. <laughs> but it was like it was the full story. And so I was like, cool. And so when he when it came out an image, what was so great to me was I was got to I got to be there for every step of the way because we talk about it. And he was having such a good time. that He was like, dude, you got to do if you're going to do a superhero book, you got to do it at image. And I was like, well, I kind of have an idea. And so what has been great is he I call him and text him almost every other day about stuff, because right. One thing I don't think people realize about doing a creator on book is when you when you when you've only ever done sort of like writing work for hire it can be a really daunting it's a it's a lot of logistical work that you just don't understand and 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 it's 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 just sort of organizing artists for variants it's making sure deadlines it's learning about foc it's 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 dealing with it's there's so many elements it's like it's running your own business it's literally like running a small business and so having Kyle who's done it for a year ahead of me be able to be there and walk me through it and and hold my hand uh, lovingly, as he often does, uh, has been, re I mean, honestly, I can't, he, it's not just because he's here. I couldn't, I wouldn't have done this. I couldn't have done it without him. 
I wouldn't. And, and that's not even say, and Michael as well. Michael has been, has been with him from the beginning. So Michael on every single day has basically been like, this is what you got to do. Don't panic. We're okay. You know, he walks me back off the ledge every day. And so like, it's, it's the nice, that's, I think that's the other part about this whole process is we're friends. And, and so we're doing this together and we're learning from one each other. And I can't, and there, I would love to, at some point down the line, bring in somebody else and do the same thing that Kyle has done for me. Um, and hopefully that'll be in super massive 2028 or whatever, you know, that would be, <laughs> that would be great. That would be such a great opportunity to be able to like bring in new creators and have them join us on this journey and, and, and learn from each other. I think that's the best thing. That'd be awesome. If it became an annual thing, that'd be Oh, please don't. Well, but, but also, I know, I know. <laughs> well, first of all, that was very, that was very nice, Ryan. Thank you. Um, but, but also like, don't sell yourself short either. I just, I just, I, I just, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, contradicted him on a, on a podcast a few minutes ago where like you, you had the idea for Rogue Sun basically the same time I had the idea for Radiant Black, because the thing that, and I, like, we can totally talk about this. Like I've, I've talked publicly about how Originally, Radiant Black was something that, well, uh, that's we can get into that another time. But the, the the point is that there was a moment when Eric Stevenson reached out to me and said, "Hey, have I ever talked to you about building an original superhero?" Like, and I was like, "What do you mean? What what does that mean?" He's like, "Well, like an original superhero, not a you know Batman or Spider Man analog, but something original and contemporary and right now." And I was like, "I mean, I would kill to do that, but..." I figured there's no market for something like that. And he very much thought that there was. And he said, um, you know, so I told him, I said, well, I have this thing, Radiant Black, that was a slightly different usage of the name, still the same genre, but very kind of different. Um, and I said, what if, and I just thought about it and was like, well, what if I do it for now? And, and we talked about it over text a little bit. And he was like, yeah, that sounds great. And he says, and by the way, feel free to tell anyone else that, you think is a good fit here. And the first person I called was Ryan. And so like a week later, we went to a football game together and Ryan had his title. I mean, the title changed, but it's still in the same- For legal reasons. Space. It was for yeah. legal reasons, yeah. <laughs> But he had the title, so cool he had the whole core of the book and he pitched me one of the best like superhero series setups that I've heard in a long time. And so it was like just this like parallel track thing like i remember being at that game walk, like going through the beats together i was like for the first like it wasn't 45 issues but it was like well here's the first year yeah and then what a year two could kind of build into etc you know so it's a little bit of just like when you do it so often together there's such a shorthand and, and muscle memory and so the fact that to echo the, all these guys like that were friends um and have all been working on these concurrently like infernal girl red has been I think Matt had the idea for Infernal Girl Red actually before Radiant Black and Rogue Sun. Like yeah. these have all been things that they're not just things we're throwing at the wall. They're things that we have been developing and curating and then pruning even as we kind of try to put together this bouquet um, that is both reflective of right now and is influenced by what has come before, but is really taking things and pushing them in a different direction. And, and weirdly enough, this flower metaphor may actually be quite apt because we've been getting these colors in from Igor and you wanna talk about a bold dynamic statement. Uh, I mean, it's, I've never seen Matt so happy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's a genuinely happy person. But I think that, you know, we, it's just, uh, I felt like this when Ryan and I were doing Power Rangers as well. It's like, this is a moment that doesn't come around all that often. And I'm very appreciative of it. And to be able to build stuff with my friends is like the best. I'm not going to say like, I've never believed in that adage of like, oh, do the thing you love. You'll never work in your, a day in your life is the biggest bullshit on the face of the planet. Oh, yeah, what funny. it means is you'll work every day of your life, like to the bone. Um, because you're just all in and committed and passionate. So I'm not going to say it makes it easier, but it does make it easier when, when you're in it uh, with other people. So um, yeah, I don't know what the question was, but there you go. <laughs> you find I mean, that even be more awesome honest with each other too. 
when uh, knowing each other you know each other personally so you can probably be more honest as opposed to the, just like a well relationship. i mean let's yeah. not 50 uh, 50, right? we still want to be we still want to be friends yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> we want to work together so yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no we're i would people. say we're pretty honest with each other for sure especially yeah. narratively like there's no like there's, there's been no egos on this like it's just about we're all building things in the in in the way that we see fit and like we're all building our own little fiefdoms you know and mm -hmm. that's the thing that the fact that the books have been in development as long as they have it has been really beneficial to the whole project and the whole universe because it means that we are able to define the core like the foundation of each book and each world each city so that it conceptually even works unto itself and is not reliant on anyone else's so that way when they do come together like in something like supermassive even though this is where you know infernal girl and, and rogue son are, are their series come after this um I think you'll see the, the, the characters, even in Supermassive, feel whole cloth. They feel like they come from worlds that have been around for quite some time. And, you know, the mythology and the logic behind them and their powers, like it's similar to, to uh, hopefully how Radiant Black felt early on, where even though you weren't quite sure always what was happening or what the larger thing was, there was enough there that you felt like it had been thought through. Um, and, and so that's, uh, that's the other side of it here is like, because we're all building stuff in our own kind of vision, um, it makes it real easy when we come together because we're all very respectful of what each other's tastes are and why their book, each other's book is the way it is. And that's, what's exciting. Like Matt's a yeah. very different writer than me and Ryan's a very different writer than me, but we have a lot of similarities and crossover. And so even genre wise, we have different tastes. I'm not a horror guy, you know, I'm not a supernatural horror guy. Ryan is a supernatural guy. And horror, you like horror. I'm not saying Rogue Sun is horror, but like, so, so that's it's well. spookier than Radiant Black. So definitely for sure, for sure. And, and just because this is a radiant, oh, sorry, Matt, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just gonna say, I think like what Kyle was saying about respect is the key, right? Because I think that one of the dangers potentially of working with friends is you're like, you're just working with them because they're your friends, but mm -hmm. it, this wouldn't work. I being an image because there's like we are all in charge of our own books it like it's a lot to like navigate and negotiate because no one's like in charge right like we all have to agree on stuff and like collaborate properly and if I didn't think independent of the fact that I like them as people that Kyle and Ryan weren't like great writers and the artists that we're like working with aren't incredibly talented writers I, I uh, artists I wouldn't respect them and we wouldn't have this dynamic and it wouldn't work so it's like great that we're all friends it absolutely helps but it's also really important to me that I'm working with the best people. Um, yeah, I, without this sounding like I'm throwing anyone under the bus, we had an early outline for this story, like very early on, that just, I, in fact, I won't even say who, it didn't quite click with someone's understanding of who their character was. Like it it didn't, it didn't we're work all, sort we're of all all the going, way. what? what which, who yeah, I, that's good. That means that I'm not going to throw one of you under the bus. Um, it didn't quite work. And so we just sort of like, we stripped all those bits out and we went back to the start and we worked out how to make it work again, because it would like, that would have been a great story. I think it would have been great, but it wouldn't have served one of these individual books in the way that that writer wanted. And that was more important to us. And I think like there's a, like a, a cooperative uh, in the sort of like organizational sense element to it of um, if something isn't working for one of the three of us, then who isn't me, then that's bad for me because th like my success is in a lot of ways tied to the success of these other guys. Like we are out to make each other look great as much as possible because mm -hmm. we're trying to build something together that will hopefully be, you know, last a long time and be foundation or for things to come. Um, so I'm I'm as interested as anybody else in Rogue Sun being great and, and Radiant Black being great, and like it is, it's sick. Also, just um, to, just to because I haven't told you guys yet, but um, in the spirit of making each other look great, um, you should know that Ryan and I have both upped our scarf game, and so you guys oh, may so want to get yeah. in on the. You know, what I've got. I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, oh, I've God. seen some photos Ooh. like. I That's have a, never in my life been cold enough to wear a scarf, but 
I'll do what yeah, I can. Keep warm. Go first yeah. off. Go to Chicago. <laughs> there oh, you go. That. Best part. Look at that. Being Dark able game. to like eccentric, uh, ex- eccentrically, eccentrically, being able to order a latte with <laughs> flair. That's a lot. A whole it's vibe. Full, really, for the people who can't see this, Kyle is sort of swinging a scarf around his head as he says. Thanks. Is this yeah. video? Yeah. Is, are we? Is this a video podcast? I'm actually. We'll, 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 we'll do a video episode for both. <laughs> audio just, both but you know what it is? This. It was <laughs> audio until this moment. <laughs> and then the other. Yeah. That's so, great. You know, you just to just to layer on the the love fest here, uh, I will say this: like you asked me what it was like to have Kyle sort of like mentor me a little bit in this thing. But I will say the thing that, and since this is a Radiant Black podcast, so I could say this: like the thing that I really like about Radiant Black to for me is that Kyle's always pushing stuff. Like he's always trying to do something crazy. It's not cra- not crazy in a bad way. I mean, crazy in like I've always wanted to try this, so I'm gonna figure out a way to make this work. I'm gonna do this, and I think he keeps raising the bar. And as I'm writing Rogue Sun, I would look at what he's doing in like the third or fourth issue of Radiant Black, and I'd read a little bit more, and I'd be like. Oh, God, you can do that. Like, and then I realized, yeah, you can't like, there's, there's nothing holding you back from doing crazy stuff. And there was a, an idea for an issue I've wanted to do for like 10 years that I pitched him back in the days when we were first pitching ideas about just random books. And I think I'm going to do that now, pull, mostly because I feel like if you are doing an independent, which is basically an independent superhero book, you owe it to readers to try and push things. Because if you don't, they have no reason to come read your book of that. Why not go read the books for the bit too? Because they know those characters. Right. They know they love them already. So you got to challenge people, especially doing this stuff. And I think that's what I've learned from Rogue Sun. I'm sorry. That's what I've learned for Rogue Sun is that I have to figure out a way to do that. And that's just because, and Kyle is sort of, you know, first one through the wall gets bloody, you know, and that, that, that's, that's what he, that's what I learned a little bit is like, you got to take some chances. And as, as a reader, like that's what really hooked me to Eddie Black. Like we met Nathan, he got attached to him and then boom, all of a sudden he's gone. Yeah. I hurts. kill people before they even enter the book. That's what I'm <laughs> <about>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Matt is such a good. postmodern meta modernist that all his characters are actually dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't spoil Inferno Go Red like that. <laughs> That's why they're on fire. Yeah, they're all on fire. Well, I asked uh, Kyle a few things, then you can. Yeah. So, Kyle, um, no pressure, of course, but you know, some someone in the Discord is going to ask anyway, so I figured I'll just do it for them. There's been uh, some fantastic exclusive merch drops every week or every month, sorry, for the new issues. There's always some cool stuff. Um, I remember just you know trying as fast as I could to buy the uh, Radiant Black, Black Mark in there, the Black Light book, and I managed to snag one, so I'm very happy. Great, great. Yeah. Those just started. Those just started going out. Actually, the CGC ones are going to take a minute, probably. Sweet. Yeah, but no they're in they're in process so so is there gonna be a merch drop for supermassive number one i don't know guys should we, do, we should uh, talk about that actually <laughs> yeah. do a merch drop for supermassive number one uh yes there will be okay Hell yeah. sweet all right and um so one thing you know looking uh, at the last issue and a few issues back we saw in radio black number nine and we talked about this extensively some characters that were you know i would say they were cameoed and uh, we saw like Shift, uh, Doppler for the first time. And I'm not sure if we've, if we've gotten a name for the, the dude wearing the whole Mecca thing yet, but we've seen that character as well, who's been teased in the year two poster. So uh, is Doppler going to be a recurring character? So Because it seems like right now it's a fan favorite and everybody really likes uh, Anya. Um, well, she's on a poster for year two okay. of Radiant Black. So I I feel I feel comfortable confirming that Anya will be uh, will be appearing again um, in in future Radiant Black stories. So yeah, she's uh, she's one of my favorites as well. Um, in particular, just because of you know my past kind of superhero stuff, especially with Cowl. You know, Doppler was always a character and a name that i really liked like i liked the power set and so um there was a moment when i was building what year two was going to be and villains and how it was going to work um and so i don't i don't want to spoil too much but there's a reason why there's a cowl connection um and so you know yeah so she's very close to my heart in that way I, um, I very much remember the day that Kyle just sent me a message and was like, what if, what if Doppler was here? 
I was like, the you, you, that, you've already put that character in a book. You can't just use them again. <laughs> that's not how that's not how comics works. And Kyle's like, yeah, but it was a creator owned book. Like we own the character. Yeah. There's no reason that they couldn't just show up. And so we were like, well, okay, let's work out who a version of Doppler that works in Radiant Black is. And we came up with that character and I like her a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's She's cool. awesome. Yeah. It's in the latest uh, edition of the uh, Black Market News. You, uh -huh. So under the year two poster, there's, a, there's a, I think it, what it's concept art of a character who's uh -huh. wielding a whip, what it looks like. And it, I, I can't uh -huh. tell if it's a bear or wolf, but uh, uh -huh. it looks awesome. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I appreciate you trying this because you know that this isn't going to work. <laughs> but I do appreciate having the balls to try it. Yeah, should we just tell him? Should we tell him because you just said it won't work? Should we just now? Should we tell him? I mean, we could. There's no reason not to, really, right? We got. We, it's happening. Yeah, it's we're doing it. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is the that is um, the main character for a new story that will be um, running in the back of Radiant Red the mini series. And it's a series of backups from uh, Paul Aller and Chris Evanhaus called Sister Crash. Okay. That's awesome. Ooh, it looks sweet. I can't wait to check that out. So I Radiant can't believe Red. that did work. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't have if Bonus Basoodle wasn't here, though. So, I mean, you know, that's you got to get permission for the Bonus Basoodle. Well, look, as Bonus Basoodle's writer, I feel like it <laughs> behooves me to give some bonus bonuses. <laughs> so, you've um, teased us with some artwork, uh, Radiant Yellow by Diego Greco. Is, uh, <laughs> is that a teaser for a Radiant Yellow focused issue? I mean, we have a lot of characters, not everybody can get an issue uh i don't know but they i'll put it this way um when diego greco did his first cover for us it was radiant red it was the radiant red piece and i loved it so much that i did two things i asked him to do covers for pink yellow and black uh and then i also uh asked him to draw an issue of something that will be announced next year um, that is very, very cool and different um, coming from Black Market. So um, he did the piece as part of a set. I wouldn't necessarily say that. Uh, yeah, it's for a yellow issue. Okay, well, I'll just say it. it's for a yellow <laughs> issue. Yeah. Yeah, look, we did a red issue. We did a pink issue. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think on, it's right? a, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I and, really and, and I, I can I will confirm that it follows the pattern of the last two, which is that it'll be issue 18 is the radiant okay. yellow focus that's issue. Awesome. Right, um, go, one of you I've guys. got this is a question that's been burning ever since issue five. Um, will we see Kathy again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan's godmother? Yes. Yeah, she'll I'm sure she'll be around. And I assume by issue twenty four, I mean, she's going to get her own one off. That's that's assuming oh, she's the next radiant black, is what I what I understand. Is that right? <laughs> you're all you're all assuming that a lot of things, like Marshall stays in Lockport, uh, that Nathan stays around. I mean, there's a lot that could happen in year two. No, that, that leads to my question. It does. <laughs> will Supermassive have? Uh, lasting effect on not just Radiant Black, but also Inferno Go Red and Rogue Sun. Like I think you guys should jump on that. Is. Let's let Michael take tackle that first, and then yeah, yeah. you guys piggyback on that. Um, yes and no feels like the answer to give. It was it was really important to all of us that uh, in that Supermassive is a standalone book, and that all of the individual books stand alone. Uh, like we, we've said, we're not collecting Supermassive at any point in the near future. So this isn't going to be, for instance, like a book where Marshall dies, right? Because then you would come back. I'm sorry, Ryan. We, oh, <laughs> Ryan, we have to change the ending. I'm sorry, I haven't told you yet. Um, because that would mean that you would read issue 11, then you'd go to issue 13, and you'd be like, well, where the hell did that happen? I didn't read that. So like, there's not sort of like a big seismic game changing event in it for anyone. That said, I do think 
it changes all of them in its yeah. own way. I think like the the person that Marcus is going in is not quite the person Marcus is coming out of it. I think that's true for Marshall. I think that's true for Cassia. Like it it does affect them all. And I think you will notice the difference going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, although that going forward is complicated because it's a sequel to Matt's book and you haven't met Ryan's character yet. But yeah, I do think it affects all of them, just not in a like no one loses an arm and gets a new robot arm sort of way. But there are also, sorry, real quick, Matt, there are also yeah. little, there are some things in the book. Oh, that's for, also true. Yep. For Radiant Black, that um, I guess I would frame these things as promises. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what we've said before is that Supermassive in a lot of ways is our statement about what the massive verse is, what it means, how we're doing things on a sort of like thematic and approach and scale level. But also Supermassive is something of a, a promise of what's to come for all of these books. Uh, so in picking up Supermassive, you're going to get a window into what's to come in this world uh, in a bunch of different ways. And I think that you're going to come away with a much richer understanding um, of both sort of like, you know, what might be coming down the pipe, but also like what the, who these characters are and what they mean and um, how their relationships to each other are going to sort of like lay the groundwork for what's to come. Great. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So, Kyle, um, a lot of people I've talked about how just Radiant Black is an anomaly in terms of like the cover work is so so consistent and so good. You've got just all these different covers. I think three covers for every single issue. They're always all phenomenal. Like, how do you feel like that? You know, puts some sort of pressure to, like for the next batch or something? Because I can't like I, I always think it's like it's like the issue before. I'm like, hey, how is he gonna do? How is he gonna do something <laughs> crazier this issue? And then you do, and then I see the covers as well, and it's just like, oh my god, the artists working. I think we've talked about on the podcast before how we wished. Uh, I, I personally wish that Danielle DiNicolo would do a cover and now he's doing one for Supermassive and then we've, we've talked about you know Greg Capullo being an artist we'd like to see and he's doing one for he Supermassive. He means Simone, so. Danielle is oh. not doing a Supermassive. I was like, what? Oh, it's Simone, okay. Yeah, I'm Simone. learning yeah. so much on this yeah. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Danielle, Danielle did, he did do a... He did Danielle did issue for, seven for us, yes. Right. And he did, did he do, team. I think, Kickstarter? He did the art for a piece of art for Eternal Girl Red Oh, he, well. he, no, he did a Rogue Sun cover Rogue of Sun. Rogue Sun okay. and Radiant Black. Right. Yeah. So, so we got yeah so we got him in the massive verse doing a cover so we've got so yeah. many wonderful artists yeah we got uh, but to be clear well. I, I, any anything daniela wants to do i will let him do love that yeah. guy we, we've annoyed him so much like by tweeting at him just like <laughs> man we got to do a cover you got and he loves it because he knows we love him so you, seven do secrets you, do, you, do you guys want to see simone's cover yeah uh, you gotta ask Holy. that's <laughs> mean on an audio podcast man <laughs> this is an audio it's video it's oh both. okay oh we're doing both okay yeah. so obviously switch over to video if you want to see this are you ready yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sick as hell he wow. apologized to me for the size of uh rogue son but the, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's badass yeah, that's dope. Oh. isn't that cool yeah that's oh, very cool. Very cool. Um, no, I, I don't feel pressure about it. Um, honestly, I feel a lot of freedom. Um, one of the things that, look, I, I've been doing comics full time for over 10 years now. And um, I've worked with a lot of amazing artists, but I've also met even more amazing artists. Um, I have a lot of friends who are amazing artists just from doing conventions and shows and being in the trenches together, you know? And one of the things that I really get excited by, and for years, I would always kind of look at conventions at different artists, always with an eye or thinking towards like, well, maybe doing another creator on one day, or at the very least, like, ooh, they do a really interesting, you know, Power Ranger cover or Batman cover or something. And sometimes I was able to get those artists work and other times the editors just weren't interested or, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'll never be able to sell that up the chain, you know, of that style or something like that. And so 
I feel like there are so many incredible artists out there who never really get to draw or to, to make pieces outside of a certain style um, that they're so associated with. Actually, Michael Cho is a really good example. Michael Cho gets hired a lot for retro covers. So when I asked him to do Radiant Black and I told him, I was like, no, I don't want retro. I want you, I want you to do something hip, man. Like you're, he's so much more than that, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, He loved that. Um, and, and, and so I, I think he had a, he really enjoyed it and had a good time. And, and that's the, that's the type of energy that I just really love cultivating uh, where I can, um, Tom Whalen just did, just dropped an incredible, you know, he's the issue, um, 13, one in 25 cover. And that's, that came about because, um, you know, I, I know Tom's work from all the power ranger, uh, lightning figure box art and so when you know he'd seen radiant black and what was what it was looking like over the last year and and how bold the covers have been um and how bold michael's design has been on them and so when i asked him like hey would you want to do something in here um you know he was he was thrilled to come and do it and then it's about for me like i don't i don't it's not we're not doing house style you know dolly same thing dolly dolly we took a shot because he he's such an incredible poster illustrator and so it's it's that it's it's always looking at artists for me anyway like it's great when we get greg you know when i when i when i text greg and say like hey would you would you do this would you do a cover for us and can we work this out you know um that's incredible like that's been my favorite experience like getting those pencils in and then inks in from greg and then colors was just like incredible but what's more fulfilling often for me or even more fulfilling, I would say, is when we find an artist where it's like, ooh, I think they would do something. Michael and I talk about this a lot. Ooh, they do something really interesting here. And then they do it, you know? Like, that's that's the best, so. Yeah. Being able to have a range of books where we can have, you know, we can have Greg Capullo, we can have Brett Booth did a cover for Rogue yeah. Sun, and we can also have Tom Whalen and Simone DiMio and Danny L.A. and, like, you know, I, I'm coordinating our, our rarer variants for Radiant Red and have gone a whole different side of the artistic spectrum. A, a cover that's coming that hasn't come out yet is just by someone I've known since university who is just, she's a phenomenal illustrator. And I was just like, I think she could knock this one out of the park. And she did. And having a book where we have the scope to have all those different sorts of artists just come in and do their take is really satisfying like they don't the covers don't have to look like any one thing they can look like whatever we want and that's really nice i think that's like a microcosm of the image thing right which is that we're in charge of everything and i think that what kind of unites us is that we see it as a responsibility that every single one of those things is incredible um because i think like we've all like you know worked at um you know the big two and done stories that we're proud of but then you know you pick it up in the store and like the like even saying like the paper stuff is like oh that kind of sucks or like you see the masthead and you're like well you know probably would have liked to do something different with that um even those small things i think we all appreciate that the comic experience is all of that and if we're not not trying to knock out of the park every single little facet then we are letting the opportunity of working at image slip away because image is having the creative control to just do everything great to the best of our abilities and finding the best people to do that so uh that's like the biggest draw i think that's why like you know i've written a little bit of dialogue for superman i've written an even smaller amount of dialogue for batman but the thing that i'm most proud of that's you know already been published is self-made my image series it's like oh if you've got the video on you can see the giant poster behind me that's the (laughs) book i'm most proud of because I did my best to make sure that every single element of that was as good as it possibly can be. So I'll stand by it until the day I die. And, and also just to flag, just to flag real quick, that's a great example. Radiant Black doesn't happen without self-made and self-made doesn't happen the way it happens without Hadrian's Wall. I was yeah. doing Hadrian's Wall with Rod Reese and, yeah. and Rod was getting offers from, or got, had an offer from Marvel finally. And so we cleared the schedule so that he could do it and delayed the back half of Radiant Black 
so rad could could that was just an amazing opportunity and then when we needed to bring another artist in for to help out on some pages he brought in eduardo ferragato and so then when matt pitched me self-made and i wanted to help help put the book together i reached out to eduardo who had really impressed me on hadrian's wall eduardo loved the pitch i was going to edit it he worked it up and he said i have this artist um, who's way better with color than me i'd like to bring him on his name is marcelo costa that's awesome. I think that was one of my favorite things about uh, Radiant Black in general was a discovering like Marcelo Costa because he's mm -hmm. he's brilliant, and then the B just seeing all the other uh, people you've worked with uh, creatively, and then seeing their works because I've really yeah. enjoyed their work. And like, for example, Last Flight Out uh, with Eduardo Farigato, yep. I'm mm -hmm. really enjoying that book. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Like Mark Guggenheim, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's yeah, the idea. Was... Honestly, that's the idea behind the black market narrative of it all is that it's it really is a collective in that way like look like the superhero stuff right now like it makes sense that it's all on our website in that way you know but like you don't have to do it as a part of black market narrative not just superhero stuff but any sort of book but like if matt wanted to do another book as a black market thing like absolutely you know if it makes sense like it, it should be something that we're all we're all friends and we all work together very well. And we all have overlapping skill sets in different disciplines. And so it's like, look, this stuff is hard enough as it is, you know, being able to do it together and, and in some cases brand it that way, um, you know, if it can be additive. Yeah, I've got a two part question, but it's, it's pretty brief. So obviously, you know, uh, we saw articles being written on Image Comics website, like a lot of different places about how Radiant Black number one sold out um, it's multiple mm -hmm. printings and continued to have multiple printings up until Image announced, you know, because of the paper shortage, they were cutting additional printings. So obviously that must have felt good. And then seeing for us the announcement that Cherish Shen and Darko or uh, David are going to be doing Radiant Red, that's obviously, ob like, obviously a huge success as well. So in terms of you know, getting the radiant black out there and everything. How mm -hmm. does that, how does that make you feel in terms of, does that make you feel more fulfilled about radiant black in general? And at one point, at what point did you know that Cherish was going to be able to write the miniseries? Um, well, we had the idea to do a miniseries pretty early on as, as we were putting issue six together. Um, but to do it right meant David drawing it um, and really reuniting that team sans me as far as co-writing goes and that, that was the other thing is it, it, this was important to me I wanted I wanted to I wanted to cherish to do this one solo and to to have you know kind of her own platform launch book I really believe in her as mm -hmm. as a writer and a creator and fortunately we're in a position where we're able to do that and she and I are also very collaborative so like and we both live in LA so like it's easy to talk through things and coordinate you know um so we knew pretty early on, it was just a matter of would David have time? And, and you know, I think once David heard the pitch for the story, um, he got really excited about it. So, um, and then, yes, I mean, that, that is fulfilling. Like it, it's, I like being able to help my friends and other creators that I believe in. Like that's something that um, I've, I feel like I've always, always done and it's something that i've always enjoyed doing so um so yeah I, I would say that's most fulfilling uh just don't forget about me entirely when you're reading radiant red like please <laughs> like no, think about my that. ego no, <laughs> i'll put a special credit on the inside front cover kyle it's like Thank kyle you. was here and kyle helped please don't forget about kyle, kyle. liked this <laughs> <laughs> More than the uh, the behind the scenes stuff, like I really relate to Nathan as a writer, and like I that uh, really uh, raised my hopes to be a writer. And then you you know killed him in four issues, and I you know got a job at the gas station. But uh, <laughs> no, it's, he's better um, now. He's better now, maybe. <laughs> yeah, his maybe, words might not be though. No, um, I just have a quick question for Ryan. Now I know you probably thought of this when you were making uh, Rogue Son, but can he wear a scarf with the flames? <laughs> Well, isn't I mean that's redundant. The flames are the scarf is the flames. If we scarf could all have flames, flames as scarves, yeah. yeah. Oh, Matt's a got Matt's got a flame, but Matt's got a flaming scarf already. There we go. Okay, that's, that's true. That's, yeah. That's well, awesome. hey, they're just they, you know it's they're they're sharing details Look, and and we that's could all they could all, they could all have scarves. Yeah. 
That's I think super we've massive. Done Radiant Black Black has worn a scarf. Right? Oh, Radiant Black yeah. has worn a scarf. Yeah, yeah you're right. He absolutely That's has. right. Scarves you, is the thing that ties all together. Scarves. Scarves. Hawaii make the world go round. <laughs> Well, so, speaking uh, of scarves, we'll be scarfing down uh, super massive in less than a okay, month. Okay, um, no. all right. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm clearing it's only room. Wednesday, guys. You need to this keep that fire in check. <laughs> We've got two more days this week. Don't peek That's now. True. That was very um, impressive. I don't know. I don't think the week's getting much better than this. But yeah, thanks for <laughs> thanks for all your time, you guys. You guys have been yeah, super awesome in uh, talking about super massive here. Thanks a ton. Yeah, I got one last friends. question for you guys. A, yeah, a, good, a good note to end on. It's yeah. for everyone. So open-ended. Anyone wants to answer? All three of you, preferably. So let's say, and uh, fingers crossed, everyone's series takes off. Um, Inferno Go Ride becomes an ongoing or whatever Matt decides for the format he wants to release it. Uh, Rogue Sun is hopefully successful and it goes on. Do you guys, since you're all friends, since you've had these characters in a book before, before being like the uh, upcoming Supermassive, do you ever see a scenario where a you'll put these characters together in some sort of story again and then b is there going is there ever a scenario perhaps or would you entertain the thought of one day in a similar as a uh, situation to where we had like image united where we've had all like spawn savage dragon uh, which by everyone together would you consider doing something like that with uh, you know each of your characters being involved with other characters like hint invincible um you know and everyone else well, okay, I, I want to say one thing first. <clears throat> I'm, we're only doing a second supermassive if these guys will let me call it supermassive. <laughs> and I think that well, that is going to be a hard sell, canceled. but I'm going to fight my hardest to make it happen. Number it of the word. Two Uber, two massive. Number. <laughs> Likes to seven and two Uber, two massive. Well, it would be two super, two massive. I don't mind two super, two massive, to be honest. I get shit for the scarf down pun, but we're doing two Uber, two massive. I was not giving later. shit. That was like genuine appreciation. <laughs> yeah, no, I was I was twisted. game recognizing game there. Yeah, I just don't want to have to like. Wow, my game's been know. recognized. Holy shit. No, but yeah, no, thanks. Uh, two Uber, two massive though. I will buy two times as many copies of two Uber, two massive. <laughs> no question. But yeah, that'd be amazing. And if it's not that, now I'm disappointed with Supermassive 2 if it does come out, if it's not what it should be in your hearts of hearts, like, come on. Well, I kind of feel like we could end right here, but I know that we're going to get shit if we don't actually answer that question. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, we would yeah. consider it for sure. Like, well, hold on, which part? Uh, Either, us I again, think we consider yeah. it. Oh, oh, us again, yes. Like, it has to be the right story. Um, you know, we don't want to we don't want to water down the significance of characters meeting. Um, but at the same time, like we are all calling the shots on our books. And if it is additive and makes sense, then for someone else's character to make a guest appearance, then hopefully, hopefully we're able to, to, to make that work. Um, as far as other image heroes, like, spawn and invincible and savage dragon and the pouch you know maybe maybe shadow heart hawk um uh, no absolutely not no interest whatsoever <laughs> cool um that's foc this week right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes we would, we would uh... certainly hold on we would certainly have interest if the right if yeah the story think, made sense yeah the as story well has as, to make sense yeah what if todd just called you and he's like I want to put Radiant Black in some image. But he's got to have thing. chains. <laughs> no, no. But I mean, what, seriously, how what different if is a scarf you? from chains, ultimately? I feel like it's a <laughs> Scarfs are the new different chains. Material. Yeah. Scarfs I, I are can, the I new chains. It, we right, heard right. that a lot in Chicago, didn't we, Ryan? <laughs> I think Scarves we did. are the new chains. Yep. Yeah. That's how I keep holding my wallet. I just have a scarf tied to it in case it falls mm. out. Of the so, yeah, that's oh, the move. That's so the move. Anyways, right, well, yeah. super massive. I believe uh, Michael, if you want to correct me, is the FOC the tenth of January or this Monday? Hold on, I've got a calendar here. Um, I think it'll be a little later in January because we pushed it down to the sixteenth of February. So I think it'll be maybe the end of January, but definitely, like, there's no reprints at Image at the moment, and we're not collecting this thing until some distant point in the future maybe so like if you want a copy get to your comic shop tell them so make sure you get one yeah i already asked also, my shop wait, for the poster they straight up gave it to me <laughs> <laughs> they straight up. nice <laughs> also um we'll we'll if we have if michael hasn't already we'll update the supermassive site so that it's a you know the direct click link 
um, will be active uh, for pre-order and, and on sale date. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, um, yeah, the pre-order are super massive. Obviously, everyone here is super excited. And all I've been hearing is people on the Discord have already submitted their pre-orders. I've submitted several pre-orders, um, getting the first appearance of two of the coolest new superheroes I've seen. Um, Inferno Girl Red and Rogue Sun. So yeah, everyone check it out. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Thank guys. you so Thank much you. for having Thanks us. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been a delight. Hopefully yeah. we get to do it again. Yeah. Hope Love it. Here. For Tupa Massive. <laughs> <laughs> Not topping that. Super.